Hi, my name is Whitney. I'm going to be making a chubby bubby today using a bunch of SpongeBob SquarePants Millies. Get the whole breakdown all the way through. Just starting off by making some cane. I did this forever and I played with a million different ways to do it and this way is just fast. Grab a bunch of stuff, stick it together, cold, and work on either side, just try to keep it from popping. And it's definitely a little bit of an advanced move. You gotta make sure you're bouncing your heat back and forth so it doesn't pop off and start spinning over your shoulder. Keeping the back warm, keeping the front warm. Get that front warm, make sure it's all touching your core. I got it all wrapped around a clear core. Makes it a little bit more compatible when you get into lots and lots of color and really thick applications and start running into incompatibility colors. I know, I like to make a big pile of cane. Have, I got a whole drawer full. Different colors and combos from forever. You keep making more and more color combos and filling the drawer up and it gives more diversity to every piece. And you, look, you just only use a little bit at a time, fill every piece up with lots of different colors. I thought bringing back some of the old cane work was uh, brought me back to my roots. And that's uh, one, one of the things that I liked first about blowing glass pipes was their thickness and the canes and like that's what attracted me to glass pipes in the beginning and when I first started inside out work it was just coming around and I loved cane work so these chubby bubbies are really kind of a flashback to uh, some of my like older style work I hadn't done cane work and inside out work like this for years before I got back into these Nice little shot of my drawer there. Well, lots of diversity in there. All right, here we go. We got some of the uh, slices of SpongeBob we're gonna start using. We're gonna take one of these fat rows out here and put it into the piece. First, you gotta take it, you gotta clean it up. We're gonna take down one side. I think that's a 325 diamond polish pad. I do a, a, a pretty quick breakdown on them when I'm trying to use them. I, I just polish it down to a 325. Then I polish it to a nice glass finish before I stick it in there. The uh, cerium oxide really makes it happen quick. So I get a pile of these guys going. I'll show you how to stick them in there in a minute, but inside out work this way is always done in a flare. So it took me a long time to even make flares look this nice. I remember watching my mentor do this thinking I, I just didn't understand how they looked this good and mine just looked like a wobble cup every time. First you need to find your Sig Milli for the piece. Sig Milli, there you go. I try to throw a Sig Millie in every piece that I make. So just like all of the Millie application, it is a heat to the outside, get your spot taken care of, drop it on your hot spot, push it in while the Millie's still cold into a nice warm spot on the flare. And repeat, grab a Millie, that plate just came out of the kiln, so that ceramic bar everything's sitting on is keeping everything warm for me. But trick is to not get any air bubbles. So be real careful laying it down. You're pushing a flat surface onto a dome surface and kind of roll it in a little bit to a bunch of heat on the outside. Fill it up with as many as millies as you got or you're using before you get into any of your cane work. Yeah, that brick will stay hot for 10 minutes out there keeping my millies warm while I'm putting them out. So once again to the outside, Set into the hot spot, push it in.
and it's time for the inside out work. These canes are, because they were made with unmelted in colors, they're very fragile too. So you gotta be real careful, you're not pushing too hard. They will just break and explode on the floor. Filling up a flare can be very time consuming. I can spend 15 minutes just laying cane and dots inside something. Being very careful to keep the whole bucket warm the whole time. You don't want to let any of this work get too cold while you're filling it up. Inside out, unmelted work loves the crack. I like to make sure my cane doesn't get too close to itself. I guess it, it tends to get too close and not show the depth in the clear. Make sure all your cane's laying down. I like using crayons for dots. It makes the whole piece really nice and bright. I think I got some orange there. I got a Herbie. Just turn, turn it down a little bit. It won't boil. Somebody once told me to go ahead and use my crayons before they boiled, and it didn't dawn on me until that day that I could just not melt my crayons down until they boiled. Looks like it's time for some fume. A little silver fume, a little bit of gold fume, always silver first. Close her down, pick off the uh, pick point. That's gonna be the bottom of the chubby bubby. Melt her down, you gotta make sure you, your whole piece doesn't get too cold. You don't want it to crack on you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna melt in up here on the mouthpiece. I'll set the mouthpiece in and I'll build the piece from top to bottom. This part here is, it's important you get the mouthpiece melted in and set up right. You're pretty much not gonna come back to it. While the rest of the piece isn't even melted in, we're gonna go ahead and finish that up. And now we're gonna start working on the shoulder of the chubby bubby. And this is gonna be the area where like the fitting goes into. So we gotta make sure that you don't lose any of your thickness there either. It's important to keep uniform thickness as it melts down. It, it changes the optics of it. So if you melt down uniformly, the optics don't look all fucked up. I don't even know how the fuck to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the, the more evenly you melt it down, the, the better the piece is gonna look. If you, if you work on small areas as you're melting things down, you end up getting like ripple effects in the inside out work. And it makes it less visually appealing. So we've worked our way down to the bottom here. We're gonna, we've melted in and shaped the shoulder and the middle. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on this thick base part. I like to make the base extra thick because we're gonna take it into the cold room, cut off the, the bottom a little bit, make it all tidy looking. Lots of melting into the bottom and gathering the glass back and making it thicker and thicker on the bottom. It almost feels like a drinking glass when you're done with a big, thick base like a pint, pint glass. There you go, like a pint glass. So you can see we got it all thickened up there. We're gonna go ahead and open up a spot for the fitting to go into. I like to open it up with the backwards tweezers before I give it a little puff and pop it open. Actually, ream it out with my tweezers quite a bit 
and it reduces how much glass pushes forward or backwards before I do my final set with my brass tool for the fitting. I get it really close and I know that I need to go a little bit farther and we'll take it in the cold room and we'll make that all perfect. So I've got a little bit of color here. I do uh, on all my chubby bubbies we get some little dots or marble things on the outside. I've been working on these ones lately where I like to do like kind of like an eyeball thing. We're gonna get to that here in just a second. First you set up all your marble spots and then we're gonna go back to them and make them look like eyeballs. Here we go, we gotta take the back of the tool and we're gonna push into the marble and kinda give it a little bit of a directional eyeball. I feel like they kinda look like organic little biomechanic-y things. I love them, and I don't love this. I think that that little dog is disgusting for cleaning my dog's teeth every day. All right, break time in between things. Let's roll a blunt real quick. Backwoods, no lick, double crutch. I roll my backwoods with the grain that was already rolled in, roll it too long, and I, I tuck my, my paper into my crutch so I don't get to lick it. Mm, I don't know if that made any sense either. Break times always need blunts though. <laughs> All right, so it is time for, we're gonna mark the piece so that we get the mouthpiece cut straight. And we'll be back out there in a minute. So, cut the mouthpiece. This is a diamond ring saw. That makes my life wonderful. And see, it is wet, but just barely. The line is there just so that when I'm giving you a slight angle on the mouthpiece, it goes in straight. It's very hard to line these up. Now we're working on the bottom. We're going to flatten the bottom out. We're in the first stage of flattening, so this green pad is rather aggressive. Uh, we're going to make everything look the way we want it to, shape the way we want it to be shaped before we jump over to 325 polish pad again. Now we're gonna resurface everything that has been hit with a green pad. Resurfaced and I give it a bevel. Resurface the mouthpiece, give it a bevel. cone to get the inside of the mouthpiece there real quick so that it's not sharp at all. I got a titanium nectar collector tip to grind out the fitting on cheaply and effectively quickly. Sonic clean. Back out for decal work to put for the deep etch on the bottom of it. The arm assistant that this thing's on, I was, I was told it was called a poor man's lathe at one point. It's a really awesome arm assistant. If you don't got one, <laughs> I don't know what they call it, but that people find them. <laughs> Line it up straight, tape it up. Electrical tape is cheap, I use a lot of it. A nice thin vinyl cover. Blast the decal in. We're running a pressure pot system and running about 27 PSI on the blaster so that we don't damage our decal. I could drill all the way through an inch of glass with just a thin layer of vinyl decal on the surface if I wanted to. So we take the 
take the logo down until, I don't know, I'd say maybe like an eighth of an inch. The electrical tape is just there for, just so no backwash happens. You gotta sonic clean that real good to get it out of there so we can flame polish it and Mind that there was a moment in there when it did heat up in the kiln. Please kiln heat before you try something like this ever. <laughs> this like TV magic. Flame polish, real low setting on your hand torch and you get inside those little cracks and stuff. Flame polish all of the spots that we brought back to a, a nice smooth point on the lap wheel. We're gonna grab some gold and some silver here and we're gonna get one of the fittings ready for it. I use a little transitional fitting for the diffuser so it's removable so you can take it out for cleaning or changing or fixing or whatever you want. Always silver first. It gives the gold something to stick to. Make sure you bake it in and don't cook it off. And it's just beautiful. Gold, looks like pure gold. You can see little rings around the millies from where the clear sets on the clear and I fume behind it. Super bright crayon dots. When you get fume around them, they tend to get like a little bit of a like dark ring around them. I, I love the way crayon dots look in an inside out application with silver fume around them. My name is Whitney, chubby bubby number 123. Peace out, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. 